Lemonade stock is the topic of today's presentation. And if you're somebody that's invested in LMND stock or thinking about investing in lemonade stock, you'll want to watch this because we point out some reasons why we would never consider investing in lemonade. Now, the first time that we looked at this firm was back in June of 2020, so over three years ago, and that was prior to the time that they had their IPO. And you can see here on the right that today's share price gives retail investors the opportunity to purchase shares at about half of what they were offered to institutional investors at the time of the IPO. And one side of that, the bull side says, well, you're getting some real value investing in the company at a discount, whilst the bear side might say that this is the market realizing that what Lemonade has promised isn't exactly coming to fruition. So Lemonade's value proposition was to rethink insurance, and there was three ways they wanted to do that. A delightful experience, and you can see here this very user-friendly app that their customers will use to interact with the company. And then these next two bullet points, aligned values and great prices. We believe that those conflict with one another and don't really lend themselves to an insurance company at all. And regarding that last bullet point, great prices, we said back in 2020, the first time some major disaster strikes, that's when we'll be able to tell if they price their product accordingly. And that's going to uh, come up here a little bit later. So let's first talk about the insurance industry. And if you're invested in lemonade, it's likely that you want exposure to the insurance industry and you think that's what you're getting, though we beg to differ. So insurance is one of the largest industries in the world. Around 5.5 trillion U.S. dollars of insurance premiums were written in 2021. Put that into perspective, only two countries in 2021 had a higher GDP than that amount. That would be U.S. and China. The global insurance industry is larger than the overall economy of countries such as Japan, Germany, and the U.K. Here on the right, you can see the trend of premiums being written in the United States from 2006 to 2021. Notice how life premiums are a big component of the overall insurance industry. Here you can see that the United States absolutely dominates when it comes to the value of premiums. So you would expect to have overexposure to the United States if you were invested in an insurance ETF such as the one that you're looking at here. This is by iShares. It allows investors to get exposure to insurance companies, the largest holding being Chubb. That's actually a dividend champion. Aflac is as well. So there's some good names out there to invest in when it comes to insurance. And John Rothschild here talks about insurance in recessions, and this is a product that never goes out of style. They profit from investing their customers' money. Well, Lemonade doesn't, but all other insurance companies typically do. During hard times, consumers will delay expensive purchases, but they will never afford to let their home, auto, and life insurance policies lapse. When a sour economy forces people to economize, they drive fewer miles, cause fewer accidents, and file fewer claims, which is a boom to auto insurers. So because interest rates tend to fall in hard times, insurance companies' bond portfolios become more valuable. So these factors really have liberated insurers' earnings from the normal, normal business cycle and have made them generally recession-proof. So it's very attractive business. Insurance is the sale of promises, and Warren Buffett absolutely loves insurance. And when he talks about how to evaluate a insurance company, the key determinants are the amount of float that the business generates. So this is all the money that is being given to the insurance company. That's their float that they can choose to uh, generate a return on. And out of that, they have to give back to their customers whenever there's a claim the cost of that float, and then most important of all, the long-term outlook for both of those factors. So notice how Buffett surrounds the entire insurance thesis around that float. It's a very important component of the investment thesis, and Buffett's float is somewhere around $147 billion that he has to play with. Now, Lemonade isn't an insurance company, and you can 
look right here on this first bullet point. This is from the horse's mouth. The company says, insurers typically make money by investing premiums, float, or by paying out less in claims and expenses than they took in premiums. Indeed, underwriting profit. Lemonade relies on neither. So the two main reasons why you'd want to invest in an insurance company are missing from Lemonade. So this isn't an insurance company. You're not getting insurance exposure here, at least in the way that it's been traditionally defined. They say this, we gain nothing by delaying or denying claims, so we handle them quickly and fairly. That's not necessarily good because they don't have an incentive to be extra critical of claims and their customer experience they're trying to improve the speed at which they can handle claims that isn't a benefit to the company or to shareholders it's only a benefit to the individual making that claim buffett here says any insurer can grow rapidly if it gets careless about underwriting so if you don't care much about claims and you say that you gain nothing by delaying or denying claims then why would you be ultra critical uh, when it comes to underwriting? So values, incentives are not aligned in the same way that they are in an insurance company. Lemonade isn't an insurance company. Our question here, does Lemonade have a strong incentive to not be careless when under, uh, underwriting policies? This next slide is quite interesting. We said here back then when disaster strikes, that's when we'll see how well Lemonade has built their business. And we're going to focus on a metric here that's highlighted, well, two really. The first is gross profit margin. You can see that that's correlated to the second one, which is very important. This is gross loss ratio. So this number combined with expense ratio, so the expenses and the premiums that the company had to pay out when you combine those they need to be under a hundred percent for the company to be profitable and if they're over a hundred percent the company is not profitable and you see here that they've increased and the company's focus is to bring these down as low as possible and this statement here in the last earnings call the second quarter was marred by the unseasonable weather catastrophes or cats that weighed on our gross loss ratio ending the quarter at 94 percent well look at the past what seven quarters and they've been uh, close to 90 percent or above so that blaming that on unseasonable weather catastrophes is only, only going to last so long and in that earnings call they gave the gross loss ratio for the very the various components insurance components of their business and claim that this is a one-off well disasters uh, continue to strike and what's What's more important is when you look at something called combined ratio. This is a metric used to evaluate the financial health and profitability of an insurance company. For example, in 2022, Geico's combined ratio was 104.8%, which was the worst annual figure since 1996. So the fact that they went above 100% you never want to do that, all right? You see here they say in the first quarter of 2023, Geico's combined ratio was 93%. So that's a focal point for Geico, a very large insurance company. Then look here on the right. Lemonade's combined ratio was 200, almost 250% in 2022. And this statement here at the bottom says, until Lemonade can lower losses on its policies, it will be difficult to achieve profitability. And when you break down their combined ratio, you can see loss ratio at around 87% and expense ratio at 162%. This isn't a viable insurance business. Well, it's, it's, we're not even going to call it an insurance business. Whatever this is, it's not viable. And Lemonade will talk all about the technologies that they're using. And this is very important. AI algos are only as good as the data that you feed them. What, upwards of six years ago, we were writing about AI startups in insurance, startups that are helping to improve the underwriting process. Technology in a multi-trillion dollar industry is alive and well. Lemonade's not the first company to decide that they should use AI algos. And the data that Lemonade is feeding them, you see that this statement they made here, Lemonade started at a data disadvantage building up a data set from scratch and collecting information at every customer interaction. Their competitors have been doing this for decades. And they say here, we knew it was only a matter of time before we were at a data advantage. Really? So all these insurance companies that Lemonade claims are antiquated, they have 
The most powerful thing they have are their proprietary data sets. And Lemonade acknowledges right here that they started from scratch. So the AI algorithm that wins the race is the one with the best proprietary data sets, and that's not Lemonade. So another thing about Lemonade that we didn't like at all on the tin when we first took a look at this IPO was how much they love giving. So they talk about being powered by artificial intelligence and social impact. And their business model is unique in that Lemonade takes a 25% flat fee. So this was taken from a Harvard article that is older. And these ratios may have changed, but this is meant to show you how their business model works. So let 25% flat fee for Lemonade. And then there's a component for reinsurance to cover major claims. So you think of that as long tail risk. And then 40% for claims. And any surplus goes to charity. So instead of having underwriting profits like every other insurance company out there, they give that to charity. That's fine if you want to give to charity on your own time. If I'm an investor in the company, you show the profits. I'll figure out what ch charities to give that money to. And they said here... The setup is intended to cut down on fraud in the hope that socially conscious millennial policyholders will feel less inclined to sting their insurer if there are donations on the line. Those aren't the individuals you need to worry about. You need to be worry about the career criminals out there that are going around to all the different insurance companies they can trying to fleece them. They could care less how much you give to charity. They're going to go to easy target. So if your claims are quite easy to... you you you, you make a specific point to say that, well, denying or delaying claims, that doesn't benefit us. They're going to go right to there, and that's where they're going to try to get claims processed. So, you know, aiming for zero paperwork and instant everything isn't exactly beneficial. And sure, they use artificial intelligence to reduce fraud. So does every other insurance company out there, and they have a whole lot more data than Lemonade does. The other thing that we don't like here is that a company called Metro Mile, we wrote a piece on this, and this statement I wanted to start out with. So Metro Mile uses, uh, let's say, artificial intelligence and data to improve the auto insurance industry. And this statement, due to Proposition 103 in California, our largest market, and uh, at the time that we wrote this piece, that was the case, we are currently limited in our ability to use telematics data. So that's the data that there's a little... Uh, plug-in that you put in your vehicle and then it records uh, driving behavior and, and data such as miles driven. It says, our ability to use telematics data beyond miles driven to underwrite insurance, including data on how the car is driven. They're being limited in the data beyond just the number of miles driven. Well, what's the use of that? So the California problem, that's how we've described that, impacts 58% of Metro Miles revenues. Not being able to use someone's driving habits or personal information as input to make underwriting decisions leaves Metro Mile up a creek. They simply just become a company that counts the number of miles you drive and little more than that. Anybody can do that. Most insurance companies now offer some form of telematics that can help discount your policy. We say here, we said safe drivers are then expected to keep subsidizing the minority of drivers who are responsible for all the losses. So the fact that Lemonade inquired or acquired Metro Mile, that doesn't seem like a good thing. So how the market sees Lemonade, uh, again, it's trading at half that it was when they had their IPO. Uh, 90 $937 million in cash and investments and a $978 million market cap, a free insurance business. So you're essentially, the value of the company is the value of their cash and investments. Well, it's, it's a free, some other type of business and certainly one we want nothing to do with. We noted in their filings as well that they need uh, money to uh, further advance growth and they're able to achieve that uh, by paying this other firm 16% rate of return. That's pretty high. That's a pretty high fee to pay to access capital. So other companies must not look too highly on the stability of this business. Um, the basic idea of running a successful insurance company is that you collect premiums, invest that money in something that produces a profit without taking too much risk, and then pay less in claims than what you collected in premiums. That alone is difficult to accomplish in the short term and even more difficult in the longer term. Lemonade isn't a company we want anything to do with. 
the characteristics of what makes insurance companies attractive investments are absent with Lemonade. It offers investors a free business for a reason. And this AI advantage they claim to have lacks a data advantage. And they claim to be the world's, and they probably are, the world's only public benefit corporation. That isn't a good thing. And it doesn't realize the benefits that they think it does. And that combined ratio is what you need to pay attention to. That's got a long way to go before this is a profitable business. So we'll close this out with something that Warren Buffett said. Virtually all surprises in insurance are unpleasant ones. So I'm going to put up another video here for you to watch. Before you watch that, please click the logo on the right. Support our channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.